Hello YouTube. Um, thought it would be good to go through the squash that I want to plant this year. Am I going to grow every single variety that I'm going to show you? No, absolutely not. I have the room. We live on 50 acres. However, um, there's only just so many squash per year that Bob and I can eat. And the longer storing ones there, and pumpkins and so forth, that will be great because we will feed the birds with them. But I've only got so much covered room that I can actually store stuff in. So that's that. But a lot of these, <clears throat> because I do sell starter plants, I will be starting these um, here in about uh, two, three weeks or so. And uh, they'll be going out for sale. So with that, this is a mixture of gourds, melons, cucumbers, squash. I think I got them all. <laughs> I think that's all. Anyway, here we go. I've got calabash bottle gourds. This is a peanut butter. They call it a pumpkin in Ukraine. Actually, though, if you look at that, it is a butternut squash. Boston pickling cucumbers. And Lakota squash. This is a bush variety called Cornichon. And that would be an heirloom variety. We have Oregon homestead sweet meat. I'll be growing this for us for sure. Along with that uh, peanut butter uh, butternut squash. This is a short season variety of watermelon. And I'm not sure how to say that, but it's really interesting looking. So I'm going to give that one a whirl, see if it actually grows. These are Jardale pumpkins. These are a, like a grayish, bluish, big pumpkin. I've got the pink banana squash. They call their winter squash pumpkins over there. And so it might be confusing what you see, <clears throat> excuse me, on the package, but it's actually a winter squash. And the, what they call squash would be actually be like their summer squash. So this is a Zvitar, Zvitazar yellow zucchini. And I have grown that and it's really good. I will grow that again. This is um, Langeland's Campe. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a good cucumber. This is a Vert Pale D. Bennings. This is like a patty pan squash. This is a Devo pumpkin, and I'm not sure what type of winter squash that is. Lebanese white bush squash. It's a summer variety. And then a lot of my smaller pickling cucumbers, I actually go through Nikitovka's website, and I bought them as hybrids because I have a hard time out here with our weather getting good cucumbers to grow because our weather is so fickle. So I go ahead and I buy just hybrid cucumbers. So I got this Arctic F1 and I grew this last year. They are a coated seed, which I'm fine with and they produced. So were they any great shakes? No, but I have bad soil. So this year we're going to amend it with some compost that the birds have done this past year we're going to see if it gets any better. So I got some birdhouse gourds. Those will be going for sale. Lower salmon river squash. Definitely be growing that one out. This is an Amalore de Bourbon. It's a French variety cornetian uh, pickling cucumber. And that I will be putting out here in the garden. Here's another uh, butternut variety called Arabat. And I have not tried that one. And I've got only a few seeds left, so... If I can get that to go, I will plant one of them out in the garden, and I will sell them. These are a zucchini variety called Black Magic. Very dark zucchini right there. And this is an interesting cucumber. It's short and fat, and I have no idea of how to say that, so I'm not even going to try. So if one of you guys knows how to say that, you... Are better than I am because I just don't know. These are Suyo long cucumber. Got those in a trade. Bilink 
by Linka Squash. This is a Metki Dark Armenian Cucumbers. It's actually a gourd, but it's edible. Armenian cucumbers are gourds. This is a Costata Zucchini, and these have the, the ribs on them, I believe. Yeah, these are the ribbed zucchini. I have Korean melons and Kiwano melons. This is a Holus Dana pumpkin. I have more seeds of these coming, <coughs> excuse me, from Ukraine. So basically, if you want the pepitas, uh, because most pumpkins, you'll pull out a bunch of those white seeds. And then in order to eat the pumpkin seeds, you got to shell them. These come already shelled for you right out of the pumpkin. What's not to like about that? And here's another one of my hybrid varieties called Jealous Neighbor. And it's an F1. This is a winter luxury pumpkin. And I'm really excited to try that. And then this is called Musk Melon Carousello di Gravina. Looks like kind of, it's like a cross between a cucumber and a melon, I guess. I don't know. And then I have blue curry squash. So those are all the ones that I have in the little packets that I pulled out to grow this year. Let me clear these off of here. And then I got to get to work on figuring out. I'm not, I'm going to plant, um... Oh, good God, I forgot. Herbs and some flowers. And uh, with what all we had going on this winter, Bob never did get those seeds down in the rock pit to cold stratify. So I will have yet another year without my wild flower meadow down there because I do, I have to depend on him. To do these things and if Bob gets it in his mind he doesn't want to do something well you know what can I say it doesn't get done and I've been really kind of nagging at him to get our terrace garden we've lost every strawberry plant out there and it is nothing but a big patch of grass basically and I told him if he got some cardboard on it it would kill off the grass and then you could leave, he could leave the cardboard on there and just put some, you know, soil over the top of it. And it would actually be fine. The, co the cardboard will compost down eventually, but it will do that after it smothers out the grass. But of course, you know how men are. If it's your suggestion, they can't possibly do it. So I don't know what he thinks he's going to do. If he thinks he's going to take the tiller down there and that's our neighbor's tiller it's not even ours and I'm sure they're going to want it back fairly soon but Bob's not very motivated to do stuff and um, especially not gardening because he hates it but they're going to want that tiller back pretty soon and I know he's going to fart around and he wants to till it well we had blueberries planted there we had raspberries planted there strawberries perennial flowers and so forth and because nothing ever got done with it I am afraid all is lost so I thought he liked gardening when we got together but I guess not another story for another time we got some dark green zucchini I picked this one up at Walmart I believe this was from 2022 so I haven't even opened that but that'll you know Good starter plants. National pickling cucumber. Some more nationally national pickling. Straight eight cucumber. And even more national pickling cucumber. Those seem to be a pretty popular variety. So I was glad that I was able to pick those up. And let's see here. Oh, we got yet some more here. I got some market more cucumbers and these are these are heirlooms and straight eights and then I have some early prolific yellow straight neck squash those are my and I get those I do go to the dollar store and buy seeds every spring I buy five dollars worth of seeds that's 20 packs and some of them I grow and some of them 
you know, I don't feel I'm out a lot of money if I don't get to them, you know. Oh, well. This I cannot pronounce. I cannot pronounce the name of that, but you've got to see these seats because they are just incredible. They are like stained glass. Tear up this pack. I tried to grow these last year, but, you know, I know I keep going back to, I had bad soil, but I did. I mean, imagine eating a watermelon and finding seeds that look like that. They are just incredible. And it's a, it's a red-fleshed watermelon. And the thing about it is I bought these seeds from Uprising Organics. And they grow their stuff on their farm. And their farm is located in northwest Washington State. Which is amazing. Because, I mean, if they can grow it there, I can grow it here. So, however you say that. It's a Turkish variety. And then I got Janicic Watermelon, and it's an early maturing Polish variety with yellow flesh and phenomenal sweet flavor. So those are going to be great. And then from Pine Tree, I got the Juan Canary, so yellow melon, and uh, that sounds like it will be pretty good. And then I got a pack of Lufa Gourds, typical Lufa Gourds, and a Delicata. So those would really be great. I love delicata squash. I, it's perfect because they're just the right size where you could eat a whole squash and nothing will be wasted. And then I got these. These are called a docile cucumber. And I found these at Seed Savers Exchange. And the thing is, is that it's puzzling, puzzy, puzzlingly named squash variety. It could be eaten as a summer squash when young and creamy white and green or it can be used as a winter squash when it matures and that is so interesting so it's not really a cucumber it is a squash and I tried to grow those last year yeah I, yep, I you already know <laughs> I'm gonna do try to do some of these but I'm gonna try to grow these in my greenhouse because um they need the heat. They want the extreme heat. And then I got some more Lufa Gourds. I'm going to try their African Drum Gourd. Do I hold out any great, you know, expectations? No, not really. Now, these I successfully grew the summer before last in my greenhouse. So I know that they will grow. And I have another pack of them somewhere. Where did they go? Right there. So I will plant, these old ones are from 2021, and then I bought another pack, but I'll plant out these, see what kind of germination I can get from those, and then I have a backup pack if I need. And I did grow these last year, and they did grow to fruition. These I tried to grow the year before last. I got baby Kajari melons. I did not have enough time. That is why I am starting stuff so early this year in the greenhouse is because I want these to have enough time to grow. And I successfully grew the Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe in my greenhouse. Also, same with the Rich Sweetness 130. No, excuse me. I did not successfully grow these. I didn't grow these at all. I grew tigger, tigger melons. Those, how these I'm going to give a whirl. I will not grow tigger melons. I did grow them. They did get ripe. I sat it in here by my laptop because it smelled amazing. These tigger melons. They tasted like nothing. I was not impressed. So I will not be growing them. And I'm going to try these one more year. If they do not grow, I will give up on those. I tried them the first year we were here in the greenhouse. I got a couple little baby ones. But I thought growing them in the greenhouse, they should really love that. They didn't, but it could be a matter of soil. So I'm going to try them one more year before fully giving up on them. I found these this year and they look odd. And they are native to Africa. 
They were introduced to the Caribbean and later the U.S. in the 1700s. Long vines and hundreds of small tasty fruit. A funky cucumber relative, great for kids' gardens, snacking, and pickling. Grows well in hot, humid weather, which is exactly what those greenhouses do. They are high yielding, and they will not cross with traditional cucumbers, which I'm not really worried about that. But we're going to give those a whirl and see how they do. And then I got this type of cucumber. It's kind of like a lemon cucumber, but it's green, and it's called a Richmond Green Apple. And dragon, dragon's eggs, dragon's egg, and it's a Croatian heirloom. This one is from Australia. The Richmond Green Apple is from Australia. And this um, funky one that I'm hoping will do well, that's a West India Burr Gherkin. I've got Parisian Pickling Cukes. And these are a French variety. They should do wonderful here. I'm going to try the Keho Watermelon. Now it says, this is a rare heirloom that was originally brought to Japan from China around the year of 1912. Gorgeous salmon orange flesh, elongated ways or elongated fruit weighs about two to four pounds and are perfect for two servings. Well, it looks perfect for two servings. So going to give those a whirl. And then these I'm really excited to try. Mango or vine peach. And what it says about these is that they were developed in China and introduced into America in the 1880s. Three inch fruit the size of a peach with yellow rind, bland white flesh. So these are a cooking pickling type. Find easy pie recipes online. And they prefer slightly sandy, very rich, well-drained soil. Be careful not to over water. So they should uh, do quite well, I'm hoping, in the greenhouse. Now, got some kabocha squash. I did grow this. We did get it to fruition. This is a Gilbert Englisher custard squash. They're delicious. I will say that. They're very tasty. I have grown this to fruition. The pineapple squash, very tasty. Oh, I do have tigger melon. You know what? I will start these. Maybe I will grow them just for the... Because they smell so good. Okay, let's see here. Yaxi Jiang Bing Gua. Yes, I said it. This is unique in that it can be eaten as a summer squash or a winter squash. And then I have a buttercup winter squash. More kabocha. I got two packs of kabocha. Oh, well, maybe that'll be a popular thing. Desi squash. Grew that last year. It's really good. And I grew this one last year. This is a Patterson Panache Juan et Vert Scallop. Very pretty. Mine didn't have the pronounced striping like that. Grew this last year. It didn't do too hot. I'm going to shock it up to the soil. I know you're tired of hearing about it. It's a Zucchino Rampicante. I think those are also called Trombocino, if I remember right. I've got Table Queen Acorn. I ran squash. I grew this the year before last. I got one squash, so I want to put two vines in and uh, see if it does any better. And this this particular variety here, if it is stored correctly, can store for over two years without going bad. How's that? And then I got Endomatron. It looks like kind of like a kombucha or kabocha type squash. But this is, um, let's see here. 105 days. The flavor carries overtones of chestnut. This tiny squash. Oh, okay. This tiny squash is the smallest variety of winter squash. It weighs in at two pounds. And the hard rind makes it excellent, an excellent storage type as well. So that would be great. Because, I mean, it, we could get a box and set those out. And then we could have winter squash since they store well. And then this dude. This dude is ugly. Look at that. It looks like it's rotten. And it's called Aote Green Flash. But listen to this. It's a new one from Baker Creek. 125 days. So I will be pushing it. That's why I'm starting stuff so early. This exotic green flesh pumpkin has flavor that will blow you away. Eaten raw. Now I don't know of any winter squash that you eat raw. 
Eaten raw, it has tropical fruity hints, some describe as papaya or banana. Well, I'm all for that because I like both of those. Cooked, its flesh is dark, as sweet as chocolate, and needs no enhancement. When I read that, Bob was like, I would try that. So I said, I will order that. And look at the, but look at that. <laughs> it looks terrible. But you know what? Hang the looks of it. If it tastes that good, I don't care. <laughs> Bring it on. So that's what I will be starting for squash. I do plant out a lot of types of squash every year. And I'm going to be doing even more zucchinis. Because, like, you know, and I know I keep going back to this bad soil. But we didn't know that it was that terrible until after we had already gotten everything seeded in because it, we just had no way of knowing. Let's set this up here. We, you don't know these things until you go to plant out. So knowing that it's bad soil, and we did top it with new soil last year, but it didn't do any good. Bob shoveled some of it out. Well, I got some birds fighting out there. That's hilarious. But, uh, Anyhow, oh, and then I got one other thing in that I ordered that I will show you. And I got these from Irish Eyes. And these are my organic Ozette fingerling potatoes. I have been wanting to grow these for over five years. And every single time I would go to order them, they were sold out. So I ordered them in December, I believe it was, or early January. I think it was December. So that I could get them. I paid $20 for that pound of <laughs> seed potatoes. And I was happy to do it. And I'm going to put those in grow bags. They're not going to go out there with the other potatoes in the potato bin. These are going to go in grow bags. And uh, I'm going to see about growing them out for seed. They are a long season. And they are indigenous here. Well, actually up on the Olympic Peninsula. Macaw is the name of the tribe up there that uh, live around the Nia Bay area. And Ozette is the name, I believe, it's a lake up there, with Lake Ozette, and it's a beautiful, big, deep, glacier-cut lake. But I can't remember if there was an Ozette tribe or if that was just the name of the place. I will have to get back to you guys on that one. But uh, I remember as a kid, you know, because I went to school in Forks. I went through... Uh, Oh, hell, 8th grade. So junior high, before we moved to Tootle. And uh, I remember as a kid, we took a field trip to Nia Bay to the Macaw Museum. And I was just in awe walking through that place. I mean, I remember the big skeleton of the whale that they had in there. And the longhouses. And it's always a subject that has always, always, always just fascinated me is indigenous culture. And they're on the peninsula up there were several tribes. There was La Push, there was Macaw, Queets, yeah, there, um, Moclips was another, or Copalis or something. Anyway, th there were tribes all up and down the coast there. There's tribes all around me here the biggest one being the Cowlitz tribe. Um, so it's really cool. That's like, I was really excited when I was going through my beans to pull that variety that I planted out, I think, five seeds of it the first year and was able to save that many seeds to be able to replant it to get even more seeds. So I'm, I'm really excited to save that particular variety from going extinct. And I have no idea what native tribe it belongs to. I'm going to say it was it's going to be one of the Midwest to East Coast tribes. But I don't know for sure, but anyways, I'm I'm happy to be growing that out and um if I can find out where to send those seeds into, I will be happy to send those in too. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, my baby geese, are, two of them, she showed a video, two of them hatched. So we're getting, uh, we're getting between two and four geese from her 
for sure two. I don't know if we're going to get any more than two, but we might. We might get up there and say, oh, they're so cute. We want them. And Bob said he was going to name them Hansel and Gretel, which I thought was great. But then I got to thinking last night, it's like, I really want to name one Biscuit. I want a goose named Biscuit. <laughs> I just don't know what I would name the other one. <laughs> and he's like, name it Gravy. And I'm like, no, I don't want a goose named Gravy. <laughs> Too much. We had we had that cat named Dave, and I used to call her Gravy all the time. Because I'd give her cat food, and she'd just lick the gravy off of it. So no, I cannot have a goose named Gravy. But I definitely want a goose named Biscuit. Maybe I'll name the other one Banana. I don't know. We'll see. And anyway, with that, make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. And stay tuned.